Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Shifali Shirvasta, Marketing and Communication Manager at University Living. A study abroad experience is a life enriching, but preparing for a new country before you begin your journey, that requires a lot of preparation. And this session is specially designed for the students for flying for September 2022 in date. Welcome, everyone. Our discussion today will include everything from how to pack to how to handle your finances in UK. So stay tuned till the end because you don't want to miss any information that we share. Allow me to introduce our panelists who have been through this journey. Mayank Maheshwari, co-founder and CEO at University Living. Hi, Mayank. Hi, everyone. Glad to be back. Thank you for joining us. We have Niketa Parikh, student at Leeds Beckett University. She's studying MSc management over there. Hi, Niketa. Hello. We have Shamavi Avasti, student at Queen's Mary University of London. She's studying bachelor's in science marketing and management. Hi, Shamavi. Hi. Thank you all for joining us today. Attendees, thank you for joining us today from all your time. I know it's Saturday, you might be enjoying your day, but we know that how much important this session might be for you guys. So you can ask your question and I'm very happy to see first question already in the Q&A box. Answer the polls, ask the question in Q&A and we'll be taking forward you through the whole journey. Now, without further ado, I'll just start into the questions. So Nikita, I'll start with you. How has been your journey so far and how the whole process started? Was it very overwhelming? Please go ahead. It was definitely overwhelming because it's a big step to leave your family after so many years staying with them and coming over here all alone. So it's definitely a big step, but you do make your own family over here. You have your friends, you make your own group. So yeah, uh, it was a roller coaster, definitely, but I'm definitely a bit settled, I could say, as of now. It's, it's so, been a couple of, it's been yes. quite a time now. <laughs> quite a time. Yeah, so the roller coaster has slowed down and you're habituated to it. Shambhavi, would you like to add something from your journey? Yeah, actually, it has been a roller coaster ride for me too. Lots of ups and downs. And I'm very attached to my family. I haven't like slept alone like without my parents. Uh, I don't think so, even for a single day. So it was a very new thing for me. It was quite difficult for me in the starting. But now, when I look at all the five months that I've spent, it has been nothing but wonderful, I would say. Perfect. So don't worry, guys. It is a roller coaster, but this pre departure event will act as a safety belt for you because you can ask all your queries over here, regardless whatever you think about it. Ask your question, and our panelists over here will be happy to answer. Mayank, I'll come to you. You have yourself studied in UK, and your journey has been really tremendous and amazing. And actually, your and sort of journey is university living is the result of that journey. So please share your, uh, you know, side as a student. So, um, Shivali, you're taking me back, I think, 12 years back <laughs> uh, in the time. So I, I started my journey in 2010. And um, again, uh, at, at that point of time, I think with uh, very limited access on the, um, you know, the internet and uh, not many social media platforms were available. So was completely dependent on my uh, admission counselor after the admission that that I'm going to go there and I'm, how, where I'm going to stay, etc. And uh, eventually, um, as as a typical thought process, I thought that I'll I'll manage my own, and without uh, booking any accommodation, I I landed to UK um, in the seven. I I think it was around seven p.m. and uh, I did my master's from Northampton, so I need to reach to Northampton um, during the day. But the flight got slightly delayed, and and uh, uh, I I literally inquired on the on the airport that how I'm going to reach to to my city, and they said that you know the the last bus is at seven thirty, and uh, uh, there's only twenty minutes left, and you might be lucky, and if you if you can. Uh, uh, catch that bus and as a first time traveler carrying almost 69 kgs with me alone <laughs> with, with three big suitcases with a handbag and a laptop bag I thought it, it would be very very difficult to catch the bus and I thought where I'm going to stay um, and because it was a first 
uh, day and um, I got few numbers, but I tried calling them. It, it was all going voicemail. So I had a very, very terrible start, uh, to be honest. Somehow, you know, reached next day to, to Northampton and um, uh, was the only worry in my mind was where I'm going to stay. Um, and uh, in plunge, whatever was coming as an option, I was thinking that, okay, you know, let me just grab that. And later on during the years, uh, you know, when I got settled after uh, two months or so, then I realized that how important it was to book your accommodation in advance. Because I, I landed up abruptly. I went to university for, for help. They said, okay, we have got our um, uh, university guest house, which we, you can stay for three, five days at max. And within that days, you need to find your accommodation. And I was, I was literally roaming around in the campus looking for a flatmate and, uh, you know, so that or anyone who can give the information somehow managed to uh, find uh, one of my uh, prospective flatmates and he said that, you know, this is going to be rent and uh, um, will, you, will you be okay? And because I've got no other option, I just get into it. And the, when, when uh, next morning, I mean, when, when moved in, I realized um, it was, there was people from, from different nationality, people from different region, but that was fine. But immediately it was, it was more of a culture shock that I couldn't, couldn't adapt. And somehow survived in that environment for a month. I, I know that how, how I've, I've survived. And uh, then finally, um, uh, you know, found few of the prospective flatmates and went into uh, to rent an apartment. And again, because it was first year for everyone, um, you don't know, you know, from, from uh, whether it's, it's like-minded or not, whatever it was coming as an, as an on the plate or as an offer, we were accepting it. And we moved to, a, to an apartment and initially two, three weeks, it was fine. Everybody was acting nicely. Everybody was trying to be friends, but you know, then the clashes starts after three weeks, four weeks, you know, you do that, you don't do this. Uh, who's gonna pay that bill? You're using electricity extra. You, the, the room meter is on all the time. So, you know, then these things started. And then I realized that, you know, it's rather enjoying or, or learning that the main motive was to, you know, to, to get better studies or to know how, how the, the UK education system work. Apart from study, the, the whole experience was roaming around, you know, uh, in the accommodation, the experience uh, you know, every day it was it was stiff. There were some good good days as well, but uh, then we realized that it, it is it is very very important to to choose the right accommodation for you, especially for for an international student, um, because as as an individual, when we we are uh, reached to a um, new place unplanned. Um, then there are a lot of unnecessary hassle that comes on your plate. And as a student, you know, you, you focus on, on culture, the, the how things work. These things give additional, you know, baggage to your head. And when I moved after six months to an student accommodation, I realized it was such a smooth and easy experience that, you know, you're not dependent on the other factors. You're not dependent on the flatmates as well. Yes, it's, it's important to have flatmates. It's important to live a different nationality, but we can't be dependent as a student. And every, every person comes with their own objective, their, their own, own upbringings. So it is, it is also very important when we choose, you know, the flatmate, it, it, it has to be, you know, the like-minded and, and with, with your likings. Otherwise the whole, whole experience goes for others. So with this learning, you know, that's the reason why we, we launched Universal Living with an objective that um, at least as, as an organization, we should be able to solve this problem and, and students should not face a problem in settling down. Initially, the first, I would say, two weeks are very, very important. Um, you know, you, you get to know, you know, how the university works, um, you know, how, how, 
uh, you know that that you need to get imbibed in, into the new culture new environment right um so i think that that's that's what my journey and learning was yeah so because of my hands and sort of experience you guys are able to check that tick tick box in your list that you have got your accommodation so you do not have to worry that where are you going to go with your all baggage and luggage so that sorted relax on that guys but yes it's very important to have an open mind what i understand is that because definitely there will be a culture shock it is completely different i'm pretty sure nikita and shambhavi will agree to this as shambhavi also mentioned while when the webinar started that you know she still wasn't able to sleep and all that because she didn't had her thing which she used to was you know was habituated back at in over here at home so you have to come out of your comfort zone and then you have to start embracing the experience and get ready for more things and yes with accommodation providers and pitchers you do not do not have to worry about the maintenance or electricity or other things that's already covered now going forward in our conversation as mayank has already mentioned and i'm going to come back on that particular question as well what exactly a student should carry with them when they are you know traveling abroad because it's not necessary of course any if we talk about any asian parents they're going to ask pack this pack this pack this but that's not the right thing to do nikita i'll come to you address how you started your packing and when you landed over there what you realized that was it something necessary in your baggage or you thought it's just an extra baggage that i bought no i was pretty planned as to what i wanted so i just list down the things first and foremost i would say medicines and please get that with the doctor's prescription in case you get that checked or you are covered so medicines with prescription food with you for at least uh, to get you started i would say for at least two weeks home cooked food and i literally survived on that so i'm really thankful for that so yes home cooked food for to at least to survive for two weeks and also some indian snacks that uh, some local currency in hand if you might need when you land when you tr travel if you made the booking before and that's great but just in case you definitely need some cash in your hand passport side for fo sized photos of you you might need them in college or for your job or anywhere so those scanned uh, scanned uh, copies of government physical as well as on your phone digital or email or anyhow those and university or college transcripts that i would say is a must at least 3 to 4 copies of those and utensils like specially for indians i would say pressure cooker is a must and utensils such that you can at least cook in them for two to three people so that was my checklist okay that now sounds good yeah shambhu we are come to you if you want to add something else to this checklist and how was your experience why you were packing and when you landed over there so you guys won't believe but i carried 80 kg of luggage with me and it was all clothes and medicines and my documents and nothing else and then my parents had to send like 79 kg of food typical asian parents and they literally sent me everything and that was the biggest mistake i made because you will have to pay a lot uh, for the courier services as well it's like 500 per kg something like that 500 rupees uh, and most of the things are available over there so uh, for london there's this store called tesco uh, tesco so there you will find literally chola rajma all these things are also available and even the ready to eats are available and there are certain indian stores i don't know about other cities but in london there are stores like art stores and all where you will find all the indian stuff all the ready to eats as well so as nikita said that some indian food and some indian snacks that you won't get in london you can carry those and for the starting you can uh, like carry maybe few packets of ready to eat and once you know where you can find like all that uh, all that stuff then you can just go and buy it like don't carry it with you i can definitely provide a list of what not to carry because i have made that mistake so yeah yeah and yeah mayank you want to add i was about to say that she you know 69 kg and i think 100 and something no competition <laughs> but that's a good one chambi i think that that's a must required list that what not to carry because uh, we we have a habit of carrying all the things well with us so um in 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 my experience yes 
um, as as typically Asian parents, um, I was bombarded with so much of food, and it, just imagine my my mom even uh, gave uh, the ghee ka dabba, and and I was like, if it if it's leak, my whole all clothes and everything thing will will uh, will be destroyed. So somehow managed, um, but. When I landed and and after exploring, you know, I, I've been to almost all the cities of of UK. I realized you will get each and everything over there. You have got all sorts of stores, different nationality focused stores, where you will not miss uh, the items which have been available or which were used to it in your country. So um, I now I've I've made it like we need we should travel light. Even even for the clothes, uh, you know the kind of clothes that we get in in UK. Um, uh, I would say the price point that we get, they're they're more in better quality, and also, um, you know, for for their winters, it's it's advisable to buy the clothes from there. So what I would suggest that um, carry as little as you can, and rather than doing the shopping from India save that money and do shopping from there. There would be a lot of, um, uh, during the Christmas time, there would be a lot of sales would be coming in. Uh, the Boxing Day is, is, we all know that it's a, is a biggest sales, sales even in, in UK. Um, so uh, one thing, yes, which, which already Nikita highlighted, medicine is one thing that, that we, we uh, if you are subscribed to any medicines, you should carry and with a proper subscription. Things which are expensive in UK would be probably, yes, I'm wearing the specs, so yes, it, uh, carry a couple of uh, glasses and, and spectacles with you. Otherwise, um, rest, uh, travel as light you can. While we are on the subject of medicine, I will like you guys to add what kind of medicines one can carry. But before we do that, Niketa, I'm sure audience and me, we would love to know what was your baggage you know, wait, what was your baggage weight? <laughs> <laughs> so I had like two bigger suitcases of 20 kgs each. So that seven, uh, seven kgs of cabin bag and five kgs of laptop bag. Okay, so you, you have not get a cumulative number, you have break down into. Yes. <laughs> okay, got it. But still, it was, I believe it's around 90, approx 89 yes. or 90 something. Yes, I, I, I know it's like, you you're traveling abroad and you're like i need this i need that it's what i used to go with every day and i need it with me but i know that's how my bag got over back but <laughs> yeah right while you while you're traveling from when you're changing buses you realize that that's a lot <laughs> yeah. right shambhavi and Mayank have already answered what we should not pack which was our one of our question going forward so now we're done with that but coming back to the medicine question if you guys can enlighten the student that which basic medicines they can carry, which is still applicable and legal in, uh, you know, UK, there's no restriction required. Of course, they need prescription, but do they need a prescription even for a fast relief or a move or a Rex also? If you can enlighten us, any one of you, my aunt, Nikita, uh, uh, I don't think it's required, but the basic medicines I would say is headache for headaches, uh, cold because of the temperature change, you might need that. So painkillers, bandages, any something for indigestion, uh, antiseptic creams, and a thermometer, I would say, is a must. Great. Uh, Shambhuvi, Mayam, would you like to add something to the list? No, actually, I think so. That's it. Uh, so for me, I didn't carry the thermometer, and that was a mistake I made. So I bought the thermometer over there, but it was a bit expensive. Like over here, you'll uh, find it. For rupees 200 to uh, 300 but there i bought it for 20 pounds so like rupees 2000 so you should definitely carry a thermometer with yourself and also you will get free covid kits in uk okay. so like you can go to boots or any pharmacy and then you'll find free covid kits uh, free covid kits so that's a plus plus perfect so you guys can uh, pack two t-shirt or two topless, but do pack your medicines and thermometers and, you know, aqua check and everything, which is very much important for you guys on a regular basis. Now we'll come, we have done the packing, we'll move forward to the flight part. And I would definitely like to know what is the baggage allowance in flight before I even ask that how early one should 
you know, arrive at the airport. So Mayank, I'll ask you, what is the baggage allowance for a student in flight? Um, usually for international flights, uh, majority of the flights give, you know, two check-in, uh, big baggage you can, you can check in. But as a student, a lot of flights offer, uh, as, as a student offer from the various flights, and you can check in probably three, three uh, baggages. So it completely depends. It's very important for a student to, when they're booking the flight tickets, they need to check what is the baggage allowance. Each baggage allowance is usually below 23 kgs of weight. And uh, one, of course, one uh, check-in baggage you can uh, carry within, uh, uh, as an inside cabin. Um, laptop bags, they usually don't wait and, and people can carry you know, one laptop bag and one check-in baggage. Uh, but then rest, the check-in baggage needs to be, depends on, on flight to flight. Uh, one, one important message that I want to convey to, to all the people who haven't booked the flight tickets, especially who are not, uh, their final destination is not London, it's some any other city. Uh, please ensure that, you know, you're choosing the right uh, airport for, for, for your uh, arrival. Because what happens is, people always search for you know what is the cheapest flight tickets and if i if i need to go to probably manchester and i find um, the flight tickets which are cheaper to land to heathrow in london and i will end up paying more to reach to manchester via london to to manchester um, similarly in leeds wherever there is an international airport if it's even you know 50 100 pounds or uh, if I want to keep it in INR or any other currency, if it's 5,000, 10,000, even extra, it's better to, to opt for a convenience rather than, you know, looking at the cheaper price deals. Because you would be, the transportation in UK, when we compare, especially from India or different nationalities, currencies, it seems to be very expensive at the, at the initial uh, uh, go. The taxi from, from the airport to to in that city can cost you somewhere between uh, 50 to 100 pounds. So which when we convert it, some, it comes like a very big amount. So it is very, very important to choose the right uh, destination, uh, the, the right airport. Second, always try to reach in uh, during the daytime, because at least if you need help, there, there, there can be help available in terms of you know, check-ins to the accommodations, uh, going to the university. Usually after working hours, there's always been a limited staff. So um, if, if there is a flight, which is, you know, if uh, um, you're, you're going from India, try to take you know, the night flight where early morning you are arriving at your destination and you're reaching to your final destination during the daytime. That would be my advice. Perfect. My, while you're on the subject, there's one question in our Q&A and I, I think maybe you can help. Uh, Tahir wants to understand what's the best option to travel to Liverpool from Manchester Airport, if you can help him. From Manchester Airport to Liverpool. Um, so there are, there are trains as well as there are buses as well. I would advise, um, you know, bus would be more, more uh, easier to for, for uh, com commute from one city to another, because in trains you need to, from airport, you need to go to a proper, uh, a different train station. From there, it will, the train will drop you in between of, of you know, the, the city. And then again, you need to take a taxi to, to reach to an accommodation. Um, either bus or if, if you can find a, a, a economically priced taxi as well, because it's it's the one time probably opt opt for that as well, okay. but book, book in advance. Um, even even the bus, uh, the, the National Express uh, coach is um, is covering the entire UK. Um, you can you can book the tickets in advance, same as taxi, trains as well. But you need to find out which is the you know the most convenient option for you, price wise as well as you know with with the luggage that you're carrying. Can our airport pickup can help Tahir? 
so that yeah. you can check out university living airport pickup service i'm sure you'll be able to help and uh, apologies i must just sharing this to guys students who have joined for manchester or birmingham due to some uh, unforeseen reasons the ambassadors were able to join but we'll soon have them in our next one do not worry about it uh, now we'll move forward nikita shambhavi do you want to add anything on the baggage because we are we are short on time so we'll just do a rapid fire kind of round now nikita uh no i agree with what mayan said and i think he covered pretty much everything and i think bus is the best way to travel because as you have two to three huge suitcases that's very convenient in the buses because in the trains you might have to give extra charge for your luggage so and it's also expensive so i would say bus is the better option perfect that's now i uh, come to this part where shambhu you can also add what are the documents that one needs to carry while they are boarding you know for the flight there must be few documents which they might ask you apart from your tickets and everything are there any uh so when you arrive in uk you will need your passenger locator form and um, for me i also carried a negative covid test because i didn't know whether they'll require it at that time or not because omicron was at its uh, peak at that time but i don't know as of now so you'll have to carry your passenger locator form your passport and visa attached to your passport and yeah that's it i also carried like my id my aadhar card with me but it's not important i just carried it for the sake of carrying it uh, yeah nothing else other than that i just wanted to add something uh, something to the baggage part because i faced a problem so i live in kanpur and i had to uh, take a flight from kanpur to delhi and then from delhi to london so in domestic flights they uh, won't allow that much amount of baggage mm. so uh, you will have to like ensure that you book a flight in a certain way that you either add the baggage prior uh, like when you book the flight before that or something like that like you will have to manage just <laughs> check that out because i had to send my baggage to delhi and a lot had to be done so that was the uh, issue i faced very valid point very valid point for the students who are traveling from different different parts of the country uh, across mind you want to add something no no i mean okay great so now i'll ask the question which i should have asked earlier but because i was so much excited with the baggage question i thought okay i'll ask it later so when you are traveling from your uh, if i talk about uh, over here in case of india but when you're traveling from india to uk how early you need to be on the airport chambavi if you want to add uh, so for me as i told you my flight was from kanpur to delhi and then from delhi to uh, london so i had to like stay in um, inside the airport for 4 hours but i think so 3 hours before your flight is okay like you'll get some extra time even then and you can do some shopping <laughs> at that time <laughs> you still wanted to carry more luggage with you <laughs> I didn't. I just stopped myself, but I really wanted to. <laughs> okay, Maya is three to two hours is fine. Uh, like, it's it's fine. Yes, I I think um, uh, to be on the safer side because <laughs> you know you you are you are traveling uh, internationally and uh, to avoid any any last minute uh, hiccups, it's it's advisable to reach at least three hours before and uh, do do you know you can do your web check ins etc. Uh, from from your laptops it gives us ease and it's 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 fine to spend time and hour or so on the airport people will love it <laughs> okay. there's another question that i wanted to ask you a lot of question uh, students ask this question how much cash they should carry with them when they're traveling from airport because th- there's a new country new city new currency everything is new over there should they carry any kind of cash with them we also have a question related to the same with the forex part so we'll just go with with you for the first answer then we move forward sure, sure. so um it, it's a good one and uh, uh, for for all the all the audience right now i mean we have we have tie up with one of the partners who specialize in giving this um, traveler card as well so rather than having a forex card it's a it's a really used good utility um traveler card where you your bank account gets open in india and and uh, virtually you know in the mobile app you have that card in in there and you can transfer from your indian account to to that new account and within the app you can change the money to into any currency 
so even if you have a connecting flight suppose you have a connecting flight from dubai or or um, abu dhabi etc um and you're at the airport you don't need to carry uh, the currency of that country you can use that mobile app um that virtual card to make the payment and immediately you can you can transfer uh, the uh, inr to that prospective uh, uh, currency so uh in in my opinion i think yes we should carry some of the cash um probably 200 to 500 pounds would be a sufficient amount and rest it should be go in in an you know we have we have also introduced the uh, open uh, you can open the uk bank account from india and you can also top it up that mo- money the moment you you uh, arrive in uk and the uh, um, uk is has almost gone cashless so you don't need cash in in majority of the places so it's better to you know secure and use the uh, new age digital platform where you have that protection of you know saving your money um, um, you know for any theft or or you know losing out on the cash rest probably nikitan sham we can can give more insights as they've been living there yeah i'll i'll move to nikitan shabib but what one more part you mentioned we can open a uk bank account from india so is there any kind of specific documents that these students might need to open that bank account and if you can just give them a quick uh, step that how can they do uh, with us yes so probably um, you know uh, um, one of our team members will can help them to open the bank account uh, for the documents it's very basic documents are required which is pan card and aadhar card and on the base of that uh, on that the bank account can be opened and for for the uk bank account of course we need passport and uh, uh, with visa there are many who who uh, we can upload the visa later with the passport and the pan card aadhar card the the bank account can be opened perfect perfect okay now coming to you shambhavi and nikita if you want to tell me if you carried any kind of cash just for the you know information that how much one should carry we definitely should have a uk bank account or a forex card something with us for digital payments and all that and avoid cash but still if somebody needs to carry how much they need to carry nikita uh i carried around 200 pounds with me in hand and uh 500 around in my card but to be honest i didn't need a penny of that i just deposited in my account when i'd open it so i would suggest like 100 pounds is enough because you really don't need it but it's really safe to have it in your hand so 100 pounds i would say is enough perfect shamubi would you like to add something yeah oh uh, i yeah go go ahead <laughs> it's okay shamubi you can start then mayank can add <laughs> okay so i carried 1000 pounds but uh, that was not useful like i still have that money left with me because uh, i used my forex card i uh, deposited uh, approx 1 lakh rupees to my forex card at that time and i used that card only so yeah i also didn't carry much more of that somehow i feel if i would have been traveling to uk i would have been exactly like shambhavi i would have carried as much as cash possible as much as in my forex card i would have definitely done this kind of mistake mari ki wanted to add something well i think uh, even if uh, you know somebody who's want to carry cash um, when you are getting the cash in from india don't take higher currency notes that is 50 pound don't take it uh usually uh, you know when you will when you will uh, start your journey there you will see only the notes uh, which are circulating is 10 pounds and 20 pounds at max and it's literally a cashless economy so uh, if if you are uh, you know uh, getting the cash from india please highlight to that person that you don't need a 50 pound note because they they literally look at you like you know from where you got this note because it's not there in in the circulation right right so uh, my i have one request from because there have been some many questions there are a couple of questions is directly related to university living if you can address in the q and a in the meantime because we have a lot of question to ask i'll just go ahead with the questions that we have now coming back to you guys you have already answered what not to pack which medicine to take electronic items it's very important especially we talk from a female even for the male it's like you carry your trimmer you carry your hair dryer and all that over there the electronic sockets are completely different so how do you really need to carry something from here or you can just buy 
please uh, shamba we can we can start with you because i'm pretty sure you must have packed something <laughs> yeah i packed everything straightener <laughs> curler hair dryer everything but i used the uk pen like i bought it from there only the uk socket uh, so you can like carry all your appliances from here i even carried my electric kettle my sandwich maker my waffle maker everything so all of them uh, were like for indian sockets uh-huh. uh, and there you have to use those flat pen one flat pen one right right uh, yeah but you will get that uk pen over there so you can use that so i believe you are saying that we have to get an adapter which is universally accessible yeah. in all the sockets right nikata yeah. you wanted to add something Uh, no i would just suggest that of course we have a laptop phones and i would like to add the power bank especially the power bank 3 to 4 universal adapters just in case the previous one doesn't work so 3 to 4 of those earphones we already carry those and also the extensions that we get with multiple sockets that really comes in handy so i would honestly suggest that Okay, perfect, perfect. Between, I think if you talk about phones and earphones, I'm pretty sure many students will like to go over there and buy over there from an Apple store because most of the us we do the same thing. Who's over is traveling from abroad? We like you bring the Apple, you know, products from there. So we do this kind of thing. So yeah, I, if you guys want to buy a phone and earphones over there, that's perfectly fine. <laughs> Mayank, I'll come to you. It's uh, you know how much. What is the importance of having an health insurance before one travel? Um, good point. So it it is for the initial days. It's very very important, and uh, you know most every student should um, um, take the travel insurance, which includes the health uh, coverage as well. Um, so that at initial um, you know traveling time and and even you know the loss of baggage, if, if, uh, it should not be happen, but to to be on the safer side. um uh, one should have but the good thing about uk is that that the um the healthcare is is free over there so so for for student uh, the moment uh, you land there and and uh, uh, you you get enrolled to the local uh, nhs probably shamavi and nikita can can uh, give a walk through of how to do that and once you're uh, locally registered you with with the gp then you you don't need to pay for any consultation at all medicines yes as a student you might need to pay by the medicines on your own pocket but any um, emergency may, uh, happens uh, it it's it's all been taken care by the government so for initial uh, days i would say for a month uh, a person could carry their you know the travel insurance which includes the health insurance as well perfect shambhavi would you like to add something here uh not really because everything has been covered perfect nikita anything that you want to add let me can highlight you know what is how what is gp and how to register how to search uh yeah so you can just search register a gp something like that on google and then you have to go to uh, government of uk like www.gov.co.uk if i'm not wrong and then you can register it over there it's very simple you'll have to just submit few of your documents and like just the basic information and then you will uh, get um uh, uh something on your post like it in written you will get all the things all the details and yeah it's very simple it's very easy to do perfect nikita you wanted to add something uh yes so for a gps shamavi said you just need to search it on your google and i think it's such as that you find a gp closer to where you are staying or closer to your university i i guess where you are staying is much more uh, accurate so yes and as of gp when you are appointed by a doctor you get a message on your phone that uh, this is the doctor that you have been appointed so anything in case you need to talk to a doctor you just ring ring them up and it's done over the phone you don't go over there personally they don't even call you over there so this is different so they consult you over the phone and if they think it's serious then they call you over in and if not they just give you uh, they just tell you what you should do and uh, if medicine is required they prescribe it to you and you're sent over to the you're also registered with a pharmacy when you register with a gp they register you with the pharmacy as well so that's the only pharmacy that you are supposed to go with the prescription that was given 
So when you go to that pharmacy and you tell your name, they have it ready for you. So there's no need of a physical prescription as well. But yeah, there's no charge for that. So mostly there's no charge for it. I think if you go for a hair or dental care, then it's chargeable. Otherwise, there's no charge. So yeah. Now I'll have ask another question from you and then I'll move to my uncle on that. Uh, what is biometric residence permit, permits like and how to obtain it? So biometric residence is what you do before arriving. Uh, so it gives you an option. For me, I had an option whether to collect it from the university or from the nearest post office. I had selected the post office. And basically, if any of you have already received your visas, if you check the date, it expires within a month or so. So that's basically your identity, like an Aadhaar card. And it is given when you are when you have a visa for over six months. So that's issued to you, and that's like an identity card. Perfect, Mayan. Do you want to add something to this? No, no. I think uh, it's it's already covered. So no problem. I'll move to national insurance number. Uh, so if you can answer, what is that for the students? Yes. Um, so um, in 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 simple layman terms, uh, the national insurance number is. Is we can if you want to compare with it, it's like a PAN card number. Um, it is it is a mandatory requirement. Any person who wants to work uh, in UK uh, uh, as a part timer, as a full timer, or for for any any job applications, you need to have a national insurance number. Um, the moment you you have an address, you can apply it online. For, for a national insurance number. I think it takes, at that point of time, it used to take three weeks, but probably now Shambhavi and Nikita can, can answer that how much time it takes, but you usually get uh, fast. And uh, um, once you have it, only then apply for the job applications. Without that, I would not suggest to apply for any of jobs. Perfect. Nikita, you want to add something here and then uh, we'll address the Q&A that you uh, have asked students and then again we'll continue with our session. Uh, Nikita. Uh, no, I think that it's all and when you apply for national insurance, it comes within two to three weeks max. It doesn't take long. So yes, as Mayang said, it's necessary that you apply for any jobs after you receive the number because as soon as you apply for a job, the first question is the, for your NI number. So yeah. Perfect. Do that as soon as you come. Perfect. We'll start with QA. We still have a lot of questions to uh, which will help you guys, but still I'll take care of the QA because I know you guys are a little impatient with the questions over here. So we'll start with Jagdish's question. You know, which airline is the best nowadays for booking flight? And can we book flight via Dubai to London uh, and other stop if we can save money? My own can Shamavi because it's London and my own, I think because you know in and out of the whole thing. Mike, if you can start. Um, I think it's 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 very subjective. It's it's more of a you know the research work that you have to do to find an uh, uh, ideal flight. Um, I would suggest uh, avoid taking any flights which is going via uh, Russia or via Sri Lanka. Um, see if, if there is there is a stopover in any of the. Uh, Middle East region, or if it's a direct flight, nothing like it. A good thing is that it's only, I think, nine hours flight um, direct from from India to uh, London, or eight to nine hours. So it's not a very big, um, you know, long flight. Um, rest probably, you know, um, a person can connect with a team. They can they can help them to find a, uh, you know, even the flight tickets. Perfect, Shambhavi, you want to add something here? No, I totally agree because it depends on person to person and even the flight prices. So there isn't like um, one typical airline which would offer you the ticket for a lesser price that's compared to the other one because I booked the same uh, flight uh, when I was coming back and when I was going to London and the prices were completely different at both times. So it totally depends when are you traveling. Uh, so. okay. okay, there's another question and it's very detailed. Uh, question, you know, uh, wait, I'll just answer. Yeah. So, student is traveling from Heathrow uh, Airport in the afternoon and have a, booked a National Express bus with a gap of four hours, and they'll be reaching Nottingham around midnight. Then they have to take Uber to my uh, to his accommodation, 
And is it safe, Nottingham, in that moment of time, Maya? Um, yes, I mean, the, you know, all the, all the bus stops, train station, at least uh, you will have uh, the taxis uh, um, present all, all nights. Uh, please ensure that, um, you know, as you're, you're reaching midnight, that you have informed the accommodation and you've got a word that, you know, you will get asked, somebody would be there to give you the check-in, smooth check-in, because it's very, very important during the night when you would be reaching, it would be very cold as well. And um, uh, probably it's, it's important to get the confirmation from the accommodation for a smooth check-in. There are total three people, what I understand, I think, because he has written another part. Of, so there are total three people. But still, it's good to inform the accommodation. Safety will, is, will I'm, uh, I doubt that there, there should be a concern. It just, you know, reaching and somebody is giving the smooth check-in is, is, is a major concern. <laughs> okay, so do update your accommodation because your smooth checking is important. And usually at night, if the staff is not there, you meet the security person on the night. We're not sure they'll be able to help you with your check-in program. Now, moving forward, uh, you mentioned an app, uh, Mayank, regarding the exchange. Uh, I believe uh, people want to know what is that mobile app name? Okay, yes. Um, so for, um, for, for open, uh, um, you know, digitally uh, um, UK account, we have tied with um, Unisesc. Probably, you know, you, you guys can email us on admin at universityliving.com. Uh, one of the team members can help you to um, safely um, open the, the UK bank account. And for, for the traveler card as well, uh, that is uh, the company name is uh, uh, Moneyhawk. So that also you can reach out to, to us, our team, and we'll, we'll assign one of the person to help you to, to get the installations done and, and ensure that it's working properly. Perfect. Attendees, I have mentioned the email address in the chat box, so you can just click on the email address and you can go and check us out. Uh, what is the travel insurance? What all does it include? What is the duration of the validity? Nikita Shambhavi, if any one of you would like to take this. So I had done the travel insurance and travel insurance basically just for the period that you're in the flight for. And I think that's it. Uh, so I had my flight from Mumbai. So from Mumbai to Abu Dhabi and from Abu Dhabi to Manchester. So as soon as I landed in Manchester, it was done. And it's not that costly at all. So, yeah. Okay. From where we can get our cash exchanged before traveling to the UK? Um, don't do not do it at the airport. It's very, very expensive. <laughs> um, so so um, I would say use, use any, I, I mean, you can reach out. I mean, our team is helping um, um, the students to even getting the, the cash and the forex card del delivered at their doorsteps, but if if not, then then um, you know use your um, the person who's locally present. They can they can literally get you get you the best rates, but don't don't do it at the airport. It's very very expensive. Perfect, Shamavi Nikita, if you want to uh, share your uh, part in this. So for cash, I'd approached my bank because I had received my visa very late because I had, I had received my cash very late. So I had very limited time. So I had reached out to my bank and I think bank is the safest, the very accurate rate that they can give you. So yeah. Shamavi you also did the same? I really think I'm here to tell what not to do because I got my money exchanged at the airport. So, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm not the right person to answer this question. No, actually, you're the right person because you were sharing your experience and you're asking others not to do what mistake you did because you didn't have any yeah. that moment of time to guide. So you yeah. are actually guiding them to the right path. So guys, don't yeah. exchange your money at the airport. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Now, does NHS cover all the all types of illness? Like hair and dental, you guys have already mentioned, Nikita. So NHS covers everything else, but uh, hair and dental care is not included in it at all. It's on your own expense. So I would suggest before coming, you do a thorough dental checkup for everything. I think dental is very expensive over here. So that is a must. Dental and eye checkup as well. As Maya mentioned, carry a couple of extra glasses with you because you might break one and over there it's expensive. Correct. Cover, cover most of the thing apart from any 
I think those um, new age cosmetic surgeries, as etc. Otherwise, uh, <clears throat> any 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 disease or any illness being taken care. Of. Yeah, and I believe dental comes into cosmetic surgeries as per the health insurance. Over in India also, it's the same thing. So it's better to get you covered. And of course, I'm pretty sure our parents will not let you go without getting a full checkup. So I think that's already covered over here. Uh, this part-time job question, we'll definitely take this So I'm skipping this for now. Do we require prescription to carry general medication as a shared dolo, another kind of medication? Do they need to carry the prescription for that also? Nikita Shambhavi. Uh, I think again, it's safe to carry your prescription because then no one can ask you what is this for and where did you get this from? It's always safe to carry a prescription for any and all medicines. Perfect. Okay. Nikita, the another question is also for you. What are the best places to visit in Leeds? So best places to visit in Leeds, uh, Royal Armouries. It's on the dock. So it's two in one. We have the Abbey. I think we have Abbeys in all the places. So yeah, the Kirkstall Abbey, that's there. And the docks. Then we have the, I think, major attractions. You see the crowd in is the Primark, the Trinity Mall, the city center. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Now, before we take any other question, I know a lot of you want to know about part-time jobs and everything. So we'll start a couple of more questions and we might take the session for 10, 15 minutes more because it's going to help you guys. Uh, I'll come to you, Nikita and Shambhvi. How important do you think is orientation and induction? Can a student miss that? Uh, it is very important because from, as I told you, I'd received my CAS very late and henceforth my visa. So I'd lend in my process and I couldn't attend my orientation. And it's very important because that time you need, you get to know what your course will be like, your faculty members, what to expect from them, whom to contact for whatever situation you are in. So I think it's very essential to attend that. Thank you, Shamuvi. You attended uh, your reduction and your retention? No, I couldn't because my uh, semester started in uh, September, but I traveled in January due to some personal reasons. Uh, so I missed the whole uh, orientation and induction thing also the welcome in the welcome week you'll meet a lot of new people so you'll like make most of the friends that you'll make are during th that time only like it's not that you won't make friends later on i went in january but i made a lot of friends but yeah mainly most of the friends that you make will be in the welcome week so try not to miss that true true uh Mike, you want to add something or shall i move forward to the next question uh, I, I think uh, very, very important to, to attend uh, orientation because um, uh, especially when we are uh, going, uh, uh, traveling first time and that orientation teaches all about that, how, you know, the university operates, where you find, you know, um, the guidance, where we, whom to reach out when you're facing certain issues or certain challenges. So, um, it is very, very important. Even, even I have missed um, because of, you know, the accommodation uh, hustle. So guys uh, do plan that you're reaching in time. So guys don't miss, repeat the mistake, which all three students over here have done it. Go on time, you know, join your orientation and induction process. Moving forward, what is the cost of living? Uh, I'll talk one to one. Leeds, if you can tell me, Nikita, what is the cost of living and then Chamabhi? for London. So if I exclude, I'm not including the accommodation expense. So if I, uh, it's around 200 pounds maximum I'm saying, and that includes the phone bill, the laundry bill, groceries and other, any outside eating or any entertainment as well. So max I would say is 200 pounds. Okay. Shambhavi, uh -huh. London, you're saying, pretty sure when students here in London, they are like, okay, that's going to be the most expensive. So what is the cost of yeah. living over there for you? Uh, uh, so, yeah. uh, so for me, it's approximately uh, 400 pounds. Uh, but then I shop a lot, so that adds up a lot. So I won't tell that amount. But other than that, it's 400 pounds without the accommodation. But you can, def but it totally depends on every person. So like uh, some of my friends drink a lot. So they spend more on alcohol. So their uh, like their expenditures more as compared to mine. 
uh, so it totally depends on person to person but approximately i would say it's uh, at least 300 pounds okay but you can like definitely reduce it if you want so it's up to the student how they like yeah. it but the basic if we talk about i believe in london also bare minimum will be 250 around yeah, right 300 oh. 300 i would say 300 you say okay yeah. mayam if you want to add a couple of other you know locations with the uh, cost of living numbers so it's it's i think it will hover around the same uh, leaving london apart because in london it's slightly yes expensive plus uh, you have to commute also um, so in outside london it should hover in in my approximately somewhere between 200 to 400 pounds it, then it's completely depends on on the individual how they're managing their expenses in london it might be you know around 300 350 to 500 pounds that includes your commutation part as well so uh, it's very important for the students who are going to london that they should opt for the student oyster card which is the card which is being used in all the transport whether it's bus whether it's tube and uh, in uh, in different part of uh, uh, UK, uh, you student get the student ID card, so they get student discount. So guys, don't hesitate to ask for a student discount at any place. And trust me, uh, UK is, is is known for for at least for you students for uh, giving good discounts. Be it even in, even at our, at your um, you know saloons and uh, any uh, shopping complex, there there's usually ten percent discount as as a minimum that the student gets. Yeah, I, actually, I was about to ask when Shambhavi mentioned that her friends drink a lot. But if I'm not mistaken, for students at most of the bar, the drinks are kind of have a major discount or something, isn't it, Meg? Mm, okay, we're not we're not sitting officially on the statement. Okay, <laughs> okay. Now moving forward, very important question for Shambhavi and Nikita. How do you guys manage your cost of living? What are the steps that you take to save on the money part? Nikita, you can start and then we can move forward to shop. Uh, yeah, I think so. You control your outside entertainment expenses like eating outside. If you see eating outside costs around, I would say, max 20 to 30 pounds. That is like, you know, if you convert. So, yeah, that's I think the major cost is the entertainment. So you can cut down on that. And also, again, the part time jobs that you get. So. Right, Shambhavi? So I don't pay the service charge over there in the restaurants because uh, when you go out with your friends, so the bill, the amount of bill is also very much. So for me, uh, like I have a huge, a big group of friends. So the bill is maybe 150, 200 pounds. And then they the service charge might be 30 to 40 pounds. So that is 3,000 to 4,000 INR. So you can ask them that you don't want to pay for the service charge. So you can pay, uh, you can save a lot uh, in that case. And then I have a 16 plus Oyster card. So uh, with that, I can travel free on buses and I have to pay only 50% for the tubes. But that is only eligible if you have, so it like depends on every year. Uh, uh, so I turned 18 in October. So that card will expire when I turn 19. So it's like bit for so, that duration. Yeah. yeah. So, you, so you can just utilize yeah. the card as much as possible, right? Yeah, yeah. You say that right. on traveling and, and spending for shopping. I was about to say <laughs> that. Now we have two kind of person over here right now. So one who all take care of the saving in every part. So very sensible with all that. Another we, one who saves on the things and then she spends on herself, which is also very great I'm, because you're going over I'm there. Very very yeah, that, that's very <laughs> No, no, that's a good thing. It's it's a mature habit that you're saving over there and you know that you utilize the spirit. So that's a good thing. And uh, yeah, so Mayank, you want to add something to this for the student? Yes. So I, I think, uh, uh, again, planning is, is very, very important. Um, in UK, um, when, when you're going, of course, you will travel. You'll, you'll want to see a lot of places. So the more advanced you plan, you can save a lot. I mean, I, I can give an example, like from, from London to Cardiff, if you want to go on train and I decided that I want to go tomorrow, uh, the one way ticket might cost somewhere around 70 to 90 pounds. It's, it's that expensive. 
but if i'm booking probably a month in advance the same ticket i can book probably at 20 25 pounds or 30 pounds so it's a, it's a huge uh, um savings on when people are planning in advance um and um, uh, traveling off peak hours so peak hours are usually you know when when the office timings are and and the college timings are this is more i'm tra- uh, sharing when when you want to explore the the uk around um the the another uh, tip that that i uh, when i was there um you know you you can shop in advance on on the groceries have those you know uh, get those loyalty cards it's really give the benefit you know during after 6 months or or 8 months down the line when you store those points and um, the the another very important tip uh, and we usually realize it later um, and it's it, it's very very natural the moment you you will go there for initially one month or so till the time you will not start earning we have a habit of uh, converting that money immediately and trust me it's 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 uh not not an idle idle uh, way because um you know you are you're staying in that country that that uh, uh works in in that certain way there there is that currency that is being used so if we start com- converting for each and every pound that you are spending probably you will not be able to spend or or you know enjoy that that what what you are there for right um, and it i have went through that i mean i think till the time i i didn't start my part time i had a habit of you know converting but eventually i realized on saving on that certain part you are you are spending double um, you know because of you know the the, the inexperience that you had right so we have been men- sorry to interrupt you man uh yeah so we have been mentioning about part time jobs a lot and i can see in q and a there are a lot of question with respect to that so i'll start with you shambhavi and nikita and then mayank uh, i think mayank will have good news for the students who want to do part time job so what how to get part time job over there how easy it is how difficult it is what to do what not to do shambhavi will start with you uh, so for me it was very simple uh, i just booked a career advice appointment with my uni uh, so if you are going to queen may university the career department is very supportive over there they just told me about the basic steps where, where like all about the about all those websites uh, so my university has its own website where it like provides all the opportunities uh, and you can like refine the search accordingly what type of job you want to do what's the amount of salary you want and then you can apply and um, i also booked the application advice appointment so there they help you with the whole application process so they'll try to tailor your cv according to the job um, and therefore it increases the chance of your selection so yeah basically i did that and i recently got selected for a, a job like it's an unpaid job but i wanted to add something from uh, to my cv for work experience so yeah it was because of those application advice appointments that i got selected so you should definitely do that okay nikita you want to add something here uh yeah as she said university helps you a lot uh, even if you ask for anything they help you in each and every way so for jobs i would like to say leeds being a student city to get a job relating to your course i would say is really difficult unless until you have your degree in your hand so yes i think that works everywhere around uk so it's difficult for that and if you are looking to earn by working you need a degree in your hand and you have internships so you which you can apply for and yeah i have applied for them and i'm still waiting on the reply okay. and they are from the city council and number of the which were relating to my course so i am waiting on that but other than that there are employment agencies that you can search and book yourself in with and there are a number of jobs and they are very flexible as you it's upon you what dates you want to choose what do, uh, job you want to choose what timings you want to choose choose it's up to you so we have a number of agencies over here that you can look for okay and i think mayank has good news for all of you so mayank over to you now yes a, a very very important aspect in the in the student journey to uh, experience and uh, work in uk whether it's even if uh, it's not part time or or somebody rightly said even if she's not getting paid but the experience that matters a lot 
so so you know any person can can uh, opt for even for a voluntary work because it's it's every step that makes you prepare for for a bigger role once you are graduated so at at university living also we have we have kind of um, rolled out the the um, becoming an ambassador for the university living uh, an opportunity where people who would be there in uk can be our ambassadors and uh, yes of course they will get also paid for for the work that they would be doing plus also we have uh, um, uh, on on the university living uh, on the service page we we have tied up, up with one of the companies called jobble which helps students to to find the part time jobs as well so so you can utilize that platform to see if if any um, job is as interest to you but but guys as a, as a student don't hesitate to to work even if you you got a job in the in the bar or in the restaurant or in the store because um, um it for initial few months it's it's important to understand how things works in uk and you know it's it's an opportunity to you know to earn in in pounds as well um there there's people who are very fascinated with with sports or events kind of a uh, uh, you know opportunity there that as nikita highlighted that there's many agencies but uh, which which gives students a part time opportunity to work in the big events like probably there's a football match or right now as there was last month there was going the commonwealth games as well so students get these jobs as well and and it's it's uh cherry on cake yeah. i mean you are getting paid as well and and you are you are uh getting an opportunity to witness you know the these large games as well and the somebody who don't want to go in, into that part voluntary work is is very very important it really adds uh, value to the resume so um uh, as both nikita and shambhavi highlighted that how the university placement agencies play a very important role in uh, you know shaping up and and helping students to find the particular jobs uh my advice to the students as well who are going specially for post grad would be just graduating after a year they should start early finding their jobs um probably just right after one semester from january they should be thinking that you know where they need to apply and they should start applying because till the time you know you you you'll get the reply you you'll go through a couple of interviews and all you will get prepared for the actual you know the time when you would be graduated right right so guys you can go on university living and as the uh, shambhavi nikita mentioned your university also helps a lot with all these opportunities i have mentioned few our, our social media handles in the chat box you guys can follow and you can get to know about different kind of opportunities that are available and a lot more information now we will move forward to the q and a part and then there is one last question that i want to ask but i'll i'll take that later on i'll answer first your questions now moving to the first question that we have i believe uh, you have already answered this mayank that we provide couple accommodation if both of them are student right that know, so there might be some some accommodation which may uh, um, accommodate even dependent so for that they need to con connect with our consultants correct how tough is to get a part time job as a student i believe we have recently answered but i think is it difficult guys on a very uh, it's not difficult i i think everybody gets it if if you want it you will get it it's just that they have to look at the right place <laughs> some of you want to say something yeah i just wanted to add something that uh, a lot of times universities offer programs like consultancy projects business challenges so you can participate in that and you can develop your skills and you can even that um, and you can even add that in your cv under the experience part so that increases your chance for selection for a job right oh uh, we have another question how does a student accommodation solve the culture shock aspect uh, and how it prepares a student for that mayam so i i think um these student accommodation play a very important role because um their core competency is to provide good good accommodation and and also they they when when uh, people coming from different nationality they all are living under one roof uh they they help them to ease out to you know organize uh, some networking events some social um, nights where people interact they share their experience 
and trust me guys everybody is on the same same boat no matter you, you you've stayed in india you've stayed in us you stayed in uk or australia any part of the world every student is is in the same boat everybody has that um, you know that that butterfly is in the, in the stomach that that how how things going to be but it it just initial you know couple of weeks but after that everybody settles down so so but but it's it's these accommodations play a very important role they 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 have trained their you know all the staff in such a way that you know they 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 ensure that the student feel homely and if somebody is facing any challenges they can come in and there's somebody who can you know they can speak and share share uh, their experience and and challenge whatever they have a kind of counselor over there right shamu ji if you want to add something to this uh so my accommodation conducted a lot of events as well so like all the people living in the accommodation they used to gather at one place and then every month used to talk to each other so as a lot um as a result we like met a lot of people so i made a lot of new friends in my accommodation as well so that was a good part of my accommodation perfect perfect now uh, i believe nikita your accommodation also did the same right uh yes so the plus point of a student accommodation is we have a common room a games room which is basically a common room so that's a place where you meet people and where a place where people throw parties so again a place to meet people recently my accommodation had thrown a party in march for holi so we we not only had indians but other nationalities as well so you get to enjoy all kind of festival across the yes years. right so that was definitely fun Perfect. and again due to the heat uh, heat wave now in the evening when it cools down everyone is down having a walk or just having a chat so again that's an opportunity to make new friends talk to new people so yeah it's pretty fun right so then please don't miss your orientation and induction but still just in case if you do so you still have some accommodation parties that keep on happening on a regular <laughs> basis but don't miss them. that's the main point now yeah. moving forward we have a very uh, interesting question what questions are asked while somebody is like at the immigration if anybody of you can help so for me my immigration was pretty smooth like i think 2 minutes or 3 minutes max they just looked at me what's your reason for coming in here student studying in here fine give me your passport show me your visa stamp done so Shabhi, no question done. was your also like this yeah they just asked my university and my course uh, and that's it but okay. i had to wait for a long time i had to wait for 3 hours because the line was very long okay yeah. so you definitely need to le- reach the airport at a good amount of time i'll say no but, but then uh, when the flight it depends on when the flight uh, mm-hmm. lands lands over there so, okay yeah yeah still you have to plan your flight accordingly so don't you when you are done with the immigration part you don't reach your accommodation around uh, you know around the midnight yeah. and all that yeah you have to like keep 2 to 3 hours um, as an approximate time yeah right mayan you want to add something the airport is is very very busy it's one of the busiest you airport. your voice is really low sorry so um, adding to the shambhi's point i mean um, the heathrow airport is very very busy it's one of the busiest airport in the world so it it's very difficult for any person to predict when the you know the less flight would be coming or or the more flights would be coming um coming on to um sorry what was your uh, uh, question? questions uh, immigration official ask when you land it's it's very general i mean somebody who's who's unable to you know um, understand uh, initially they what they're asking then they they try to ask question if if you are able to hear correctly and if you are giving that answer that you know you're definitely here for the studies and this is the university that you want to study they don't they don't cross questions okay so if you are getting a question multiple questions then that means you have done something so <laughs> just have a smile and answer a question confidently <laughs> okay now i think you guys have already answered this question is that you know once the immigration is happen how long does it take is it advisable to take a national express coach for 3 hours from landing it it completely depends which which airport as i said that heathrow airport is is very very busy and shambhi has rightly highlighted that it it took about 3 hours 
Um, usually at immigration, um, one to two hours is, is a normal wait time because of the long queues. But um, three and a half to four hours is an ideal time to book um, you know, any, any other means of transport. Perfect. Nikita, you want to add something to this? Uh, yes, I was just saying ki, uh, yeah, you should keep a gap of three hours if you're booking prior to coming. But if not, you can also book when, when you arrive because there are bus stations right as soon as you step out of the airport. So it's just going to cost you a little more. But at least you have a fixed guarantee that you will get a bus depending on the time that you're arriving. Because if you book, book prior and maybe if you miss the time, then you also miss the bus as well. So that's also an option that you can book uh, when you reach over there. Right. It's just important that you're not landing at the middle of the night. So if you're landing at right. odd hours, then book a prior. Or if you want to, try, you're landing maybe a bright day time, then you can just go and book ahead. Right. Right. And I'm, okay. So uh, yeah, ma'am. Yeah. But there's one more option for you know somebody is booking the bus in advance or train in advance. You have uh, there's a ticket called the flexible tickets. Um, um, so in that it gives a luxury that probably you know you've planned that you would be reaching at six, and if you miss that train or bus, whatever the next would be there, you you are free to to uh, onboard uh, that as well. But then again, you need to uh, buy that flexible ticket, which is which is called. Right. Best SIM card to use in London, which provides good plans. Uh, Shambhavi, I believe you can answer this question. So I'm using Voxy. Uh, so for me, my charge is uh, uh, 10 pounds for unlimited calls. Uh, only like the local calls. You can't call like international. Uh, international. Yeah. And then it includes 25 GB. Uh, GBs of data so my accommodation has Wi-Fi so I don't require data that much only when I go out and even a lot of places have Wi-Fi so uh, that's not an, uh, not an issue for me so for me Voxy works well right my is, is and, uh, yeah just wanted to add something sure. that there aren't any Voxy stores so you'll have to go to Vodafone and they'll offer you the Voxy SIM card okay Mayam if you can help the students with the SIM card question Probably Nikita would be the um, um, Nikita can answer. Uh, yeah. So when I had gone for my visa, I would I was provided with a SIM card there as, uh, as well, which was a Libara card, and I am still using that. And I think it's it works best for me because I recharge of around ten pounds for a month, which gives me unlimited uh, calls, no charge on SMS as well. Uh, 100 minutes of international call and 6 GB. So it works pretty well. Oh, great. Uh, cost of local bus in Birmingham. If you guys can tell you, uh, cost of uh, local bus pass at your location, Birmingham, I'm really sorry. Uh, we'll definitely get the Birmingham student ambassador next time and we'll definitely answer this. Uh, Nikita, if you can tell the local bus pass at your... Uh, so the bus that I have over here and which runs quite frequently, like within 15 or 20 minutes time, is the first bus. And uh, there are like two kinds of passes. Uh, there's one like a standard pass for an for a month and one student pass. So the student pass costs you thirty five pounds for a month, and you can travel anywhere around the city. And the uh, standard pass costs you forty five pounds. So it's a uh, ten pounds plus. Okay, Shamavi, what is the cost of local bus pass in London? Uh, so for me, it is free because of the, because of the 16 plus Oyster card. But other than that, it's 1.65 pounds uh, per bus ride. And for tube, it's 2.5 pounds. Okay. Uh, Shambhavi, I'll ask you the same question and then we'll move forward to Nikita and uh, Mayan for that. So what are the cards that you mentioned for spending less and for major discounts? Uh, 16 plus Oyster card. Oyster card. Is there any other, any other such card also? Uh, you are talking about the travel one, right? Or travel or anything from where they can save money. Oh, so I only use the 16 plus Oyster card for saving money. Other, okay. than, other than that, I don't know anything else. This no one you can get uh, on the website only, on the Oyster card website only. And you have to check whether you are eligible or not. Understood. Nikita? 
Uh, yes, so as I mentioned, the for traveling first bus, it's 35 pounds on the student pass on monthly basis. And for other expenses like shopping for specific brands or anything else, I use Uni Days. It's an app that you get on the phone where you just need to put in which university you're going to and for how long you're studying. So if you just put that, it's there. But I think the minus point is uh, you can use it only once. Like for one brand, you can use it only once. So I think that's the minus point. But Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mayank, if you want to add something, if you have any card on your tips right now. When, when I was a student, I, I, I had loads of card. That's it. <laughs> We're not going back there again. But yeah, of course, things have changed. And if there's anything, you can definitely check our, our website. I'm pretty sure we'll be able to help you over there. Otherwise, you have mentioned the email address. Guys, I know we have taken a lot of time, but there's still a couple of questions. Just for your update, if you are really in rush, we will be uploading the answers of the exact question that we asked on our community. So do go, uh, you know, uh, like and join the community, Facebook community. The link is mentioned in the chat box. Second, we'll be uploading the video of this whole webinar on our YouTube as well. So go ahead on YouTube. The channel link is mentioned in the chat box. Subscribe so that you get a notification as soon as we upload it. Don't miss on that. Now moving back uh, to the questions that we have. How much, uh, uh, you know, liquid we can carry while we are checking in uh, for the cabin? Nikita. Sorry, can you please repeat your question? How much liquid we can carry? Like ML, what is the ML amount we can carry? Uh, I think it's better you keep it to a bare minimum, like only travel essentials because you have the risk of it spilling. And if it's something like ghee and like, like butter or something like, not butter, ghee. So it's, you freeze it for like three to four days and then you can take it with you. But other creams and liquids, I would suggest you, not keep it to a bare minimum okay shamavi any any number if you have or you will suggest not to take it in the cabin or chicken bag so i don't know about uh, like from india to london but when i was traveling from london i had uh, my body mist so the bottle uh, was 250 ml uh, but the liquid was only 100 ml or something but they didn't allow me to carry it so i think so it's approximately 100 ml but uh, it also depends on the bottle size. I don't know about India from like from India to London, but it's definitely about from London to uh, India. Understood. Understood. Uh, is it difficult to handle work and study together? Shambhavi, Nikita? Uh, not really, because for university, it's not like India, like it's specific timings. For me, we have like specific days, only those days you have to go. And even then it's for two hours or three hours, depending on how many classes you have. So it's really flexible. So I would say it's not that difficult to handle both. Perfect. Now, before we move on to more questions and Q&A, there are a couple of more left. This is very important for you students to know. Uh, Nikita and Shambhavi, uh, please help the student with list of application that they should definitely have in their phones when they are landing in UK. Uh, I think one Uber for Leeds, we have in uh, cab called as Amber Cars, but I would still prefer Uber because Amber Cars uh, charges you more for the luggage that you have with you. So I would suggest Uber for the cabs. Again, the discount app that I said earlier, the uni days, that one, uh, Grammarly, I would say for in the long run. You will need that for the corrections of your essays or anything. And again, uh, when you write your essays and uh, stuff like that for your assignments, uh, you need to cite your work. Whatever you write, you need to cite your work. So for that, uh, you can go for Harvard citation. It's free. So I think that's very essential and that what came very handy for me. Perfect. Shambhavi, any other new apps that you want to highlight? Uh, so one of them is City Mapper, uh, and then Google Maps and Uber Bolt, these four. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So City Map is basically like Google Maps, but it will provide you a, a better solution when you're trying okay. to find tubes and all. Perfect. Now moving back to our Q&A, is there any limit on the amount of IHS and uh, 
is the doctor visit for free any as you mentioned the doctor visits are free until unless it's hair or teeth or dental sorry yes so is there any limit on the amount uh no so before applying for a visa we need to pay the money the insurance money so that's i think that it's the fixed amount and it differs according to the study period so uh, that's a fixed amount that's why it's free for you over here because you have already paid for it so i won't say it's free but yeah you don't need to pay anything extra over here after that understood and does skin care also is covered into this i uh, just treatment or is it uh, no skin no is that no that that will come under cosmetic so it's not covered understood uh, okay this question for us uh, maya uh, we do have flats on sharing in basis right yes okay and if you want to know more information um, because you are anonymous uh, just reach out to us on our email or you can check out the website itself for specific city for which you are looking and if you haven't booked your accommodation please go ahead and book it today itself before 15th of august so that you can get a good accommodation because if i'm not mistaken places are filling very quickly at this time right mayank yes yes absolutely okay so how strict is the university to attend it's a very good question <laughs> students chambavi uh being an international student it's very necessary because you have come solely for the purpose of studying so it's very important for if to tell you specific for my university all the international students need to whenever you i have my classes i need to go and scan a qr code and that's my attendance that i put on and also the faculty members know which classes you are attending and which not and it's very necessary if you i think if you miss more than two or three classes a uh, notice has been sent and it can affect further on your post work visa so it's very essential that you attend your classes right shamavi so i attended all the classes like a to z all of them uh i used to just wake up and uh, if i ever thought that i don't want to go i just used to think i'm paying 20 lakhs i need to go and that was my motivator uh, other than that it is quite important because even for your assignments and also your teachers keep on telling you a lot uh, during the lectures as well and uh, it provides a lot of ease when you're doing your assignment so yeah it's very necessary to attend as many classes as possible right so we do understand that you want to party a little more but as shambhavi mentioned and nikita mentioned that you are going over there for basically studies only so i think shambhavi's motivation mantra is very good you know keep that money in front of you on a note on a paper and you know i have to go to class because i've spent so much of money to come here and study once you're done with university then you can party a little more right okay now moving forward to the another question the last question in this q and a i believe at any if you have another question then we'll definitely move forward to the next part two that will uh, launch really soon so what about the university clubs how useful they are shambhavi i'll start with you can you please repeat the question then yeah please no problem uh, what about the university clubs how useful these clubs are for students and why should they join uh, like this so my university has a lot of fun clubs as well like bollywood dance society and all of those so i joined them uh, because i want some fun as well apart from the education part so i joined the all the dance and singing and all of those like fun related clubs but other than that there are also accounting society finance society so you can even join uh, those and they'll provide you with some like they organize certain events and then you can attend those so they um, invite panelists you can talk to them so yeah they are also very informative and useful perfect nikita uh yeah so as she said there are a lot of clubs that we have that you can choose from from the various categories that we have for me personally i am not into any of those clubs because i hardly find time and whenever i have free time i'm like i just want to have a sleep or just watch something on my laptop but yeah it's i think it's a great place to network so you should definitely join for more better experience yes so definitely right thank you so much everyone for joining us for all your support and time today 
I know that we have extended this and next time I'll keep in mind that I'll do the session for more than an hour, maybe for two hours, because I know that there are a lot of queries we have. Uh, before we uh, move forward to the closing part, uh, Nikita, Mayang, Shambhavi, if you have any, you know, two cents for the students who are planning to, to go this September, who are actually just packing right now to go this September 2022. Mayang, let's start with you. Uh, very very important phase of, of life i would say um, don't don't get nervous um, be, be confident um, as i said that you know everybody is in the same boat so enjoy every every moment um, uh, information is is a is a key reach out for the right information and take the informed decision just don't don't go on a on a haste that you know, somebody has done this i need to also do this uh, there's good thing about you know the social media is and uh, with the universities uh, are also you know helping that the information is available it's on us that where to find that right information and then take the informed decision i wish you all the best thank you ma'am nikita so all i would like to say is no matter how much baggage allowance you get i would say pack light uh, travel hassle free and for any queries whatsoever you have, and if you don't have anybody in the UK, I would say anytime reach your university, they will help you out in each and every way. But do enjoy when you come here. Don't just focus on studies. Enjoy. That's all. Uh, mind you guys, this is Nikita who just said that she doesn't have time to join clubs. And along with studies, you have to manage party also. Yes, that, that, that's important. Yeah, <laughs> I also want to, this, uh, want to say the same thing. Don't pack too much. Don't make the same mistake that I did. And at the starting, you might feel a bit lonely, a bit uh, homesick. But later on, it's everything amazing and nothing boring and nothing sad or nothing bad. It's just good and good and good. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. So, Shruti, uh, for you, uh, the answer is that uh, Nikita and Shambhavi are present are, uh, on our university living community. The link is in the chat box. Do go ahead and join them. And uh, I believe if you post a question over there, along with Nikita and Shambhavi, there are many other students and ex uh, you know subject experts who will be happy to help you over there. So thank you so much, guys, again, uh, for all the support and time. And before we end, as I mentioned earlier, if you would like to watch this video again, we'll be uploading this on YouTube. So go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Link is in the chat box. And if you have any queries with respect to university living, write your question on admin at the Red University Living and our teammate will reach out to you. We'll be closing our session. Thank you again for joining. We hope you found it useful. Looking forward to seeing you guys next Friday at 5 p.m. on our dual TV study abroad 101. Stay tuned to our social media handles for more information. Take care. Thank you so much.